My first experience with the meat and potatoes of skepticism occurred at my local center for inquiry. A friend of mine made a presentation about the rules of skepticism. This was extremely handy for me and hopefully will be a good guide for you if you follow these rules. Here are two lists of rules to be skeptical laid out by PSYCOP, an organization founded in part by Carl Sagan to counter bogus claims made during his day. Rules for personal skepticism. Follow the evidence. Just like a detective, follow clues. These clues, when properly assessed, are called evidence. One has to be careful not to contaminate the evidence. If one is able to solve the case, the evidence will be used to convict the person and send them to jail. If the evidence gets contaminated or is no longer usable, the criminal must get released because there is no evidence of his case or it could send the wrong person to jail. We live in a system where people are innocent until proven guilty most of the time, otherwise we would send a lot more innocent people to jail than we already do. So we cannot make any positive assertions until we have enough evidence. Science uses the same principle. It collects evidence and analyzes that evidence. Sometimes science will make evidence via experiments and everyone can learn how to make this evidence and repeat it. Sometimes, like in criminal cases, the evidence can only be found and they have to use science and past cases to find out what happened. Remain open to new discoveries. If a detective has a case and one thinks that the person is guilty, she will think the person is guilty because she has enough evidence. If a new piece of evidence happens, or she finds out that one of their pieces of evidence were wrong, one may have to change their mind about the person she thought was guilty. It's difficult and means that she may have to come up with a brand new suspect, or just might find that the person did it, but did it differently than she first thought. She may have enough evidence now, or she may have to look for more evidence. Take a cautious position until facts are in. Innocent until proven guilty. If someone tells you something, try not to assume that what the person is telling you is either true or false unless you have enough information to make a good decision. If you just assume that you want to believe based on what you think about the idea or the person, you may make a bad decision. Be prepared to change your mind in light of new evidence. Many times it's really hard to change your mind, even when you see the evidence for yourself. You want to believe you're right. Feeling wrong makes you feel stupid, but feeling bad won't help you be right later. Everyone has to change their mind when presented with better evidence. Do not feel dumb. Even Einstein had to change his mind. Mistakes and errors in knowledge are how learning begins. Be respectful when challenging ideas and beliefs. Being arrogant, a know-it-all or a jerk, won't help anyone, and they will be less open to changing their mind. Always do the math. Make sure your math is correct. If you're using statistics or mathematical figures that don't add up, it will lead you to the wrong conclusion and hurt how people see you. Read. Always keep reading. Reading is important to be skeptical and being right. Things we know change as new discoveries occur, so if you stop reading you may fall behind in your topic and end up being wrong. Also, if you're skeptical of a broad topic, not reading enough may make you miss some major evidence and that will make you come to the wrong conclusions without it. Always fact check even on positions you agree with. This is the most difficult thing for a person to do as looking up references and citing sources takes time and energy. But I can tell you that many times there was something I was sure I was right about but after looking into the research I had to admit I was wrong about what I thought I agreed with. This is humbling, but it's also part of being skeptical. Be aware of your own biases. Biases are what happens when you want to believe something or you believe something without question. Biases are naturally wired into your brain, just in the design of your sensory inputs and the instinctual reactions to things. You need to be aware of these or you end up getting bad information in your studies. Scientists have tests called controls to prevent their own biases from getting it in the way. Those were all personal rules that I try and follow. I can't say that I 100% follow it, but I'm very certain I follow them a lot more than the average person does. In the next video, we'll discuss the rules for discussion and debate.